Brahma was not a, comp was not a pure devotee. Uh, Lord Brahma is the origin of our disciplic succession. So if he's not a pure devotee, then, you know, what chance do we have? No, of course Brahma is a pure devotee. But Brahma has pastimes as the uh, avatar of the mode of passion. You see? He is, he is the demigod that controls the mode of passion, the Rajaguna. So sometimes he has uh, pastimes in that mode. Uh, it's just like um, someone who has a job. And he goes to his job, and when he does his work, he has to do things that he normally wouldn't do, you know, at home. Uh, but then he comes home, you know, like uh, Prabhupada uses the example of the king. Uh, the king, when he goes to, to the court, he has to make all these big decisions and has to deal with all these very important people and there's all this diplomacy and everybody's bowing down to him and stuff like that. But when he gets home, he's got his kids, you know, he's playing with his kids and crawling around on the floor and wrestling with them and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, he, he's a completely different person at home than when he's, let's say, on the battlefield. Uh, the, the personality of the king uh, changes according to the location and the role that he's playing in, in his pastimes. So if we can do like that, then can't a Brahma also do like that? Sometimes he acts like he's not a pure devotee. Sometimes he acts like he's falling down. Uh, but he has to do that in his capacity as the controller of the mode of passion. This is a little difficult to understand. Uh, so that's why I've been avoiding this question. I really don't like this question because it contains the seed of doubt about Lord Brahma. Well, if Lord Brahma is not a pure devotee, then, you know, where are we? Uh, we're in the Brahma Madhva Sampradaya. So uh, actually, he is a pure devotee, and you'll find in, in the uh, Brahma Samhita a very nice prayer uh, that he realized. And also in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, that Brahma realized Krishna. So if Brahma realized Krishna, he's certainly a pure devotee. But sometimes he acts like he's not a pure devotee. <laughs> so, you know, maybe Prabhupada made that comment. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, try to understand. Is that more clear now? Can you fix that fire? Okay, good. Any more questions? Stephen Ashton. Is there any deficiency in my devotion if I don't feel connection with a particular expansion of Krishna, such as Lord Jagannath's form? I'm not quite sure. I don't really understand the question. I don't know. It just seems like one of those rhetorical questions. In the beginning stage of devotion, nobody feels anything. <laughs> I mean, in the, in the neophyte stage of devotion, um, we're not very advanced. Huh? So uh, we don't have uh, a relationship or a feeling about any of the Lord's expansions. So, uh, so what's what's the question? You know, if we if we don't feel some uh, relationship with the Lord, of course we're in the neophyte stage. But the Lord, in any of His forms, is worthy of our devotion and love. Uh, so, of course, we may have an attraction to one form more than another. That's natural. Everyone has different preferences, and so on. But, you know, the Lord is the Lord when he appears in this form or that form or, or any form. 
So I'm asking you to clarify the question, please. He must be typing, so let's wait a couple of seconds. She says, yes, this is what I was getting at. What is what you were getting at? <laughs> he answered the question. Oh, I answered the question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. No, that's it. Any questions? No questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll take care. Namaste Narasimhaya